The Auto Digitizing Toolbox has 10 different tools for auto digitizing. Some tools work best with clip art style images with well-defined crisp areas of solid colors, while others are optimized for photographs. In this lesson, we'll use these first two tools to auto digitize one of the clip art style images included with Hatch so you can see how they compare. Then I'll show you some of the steps I use to modify this auto digitized design. While an appropriate image is key to any sort of digitizing, it's even more vital when it comes to auto digitizing. Depending on your artwork and your expectations for a sewn version, one click digitizing is not generally realistic. What auto digitizing can do with the right artwork is to jumpstart the digitizing process by creating all of the objects and initially applying stitches. Then you're free to make changes with other tools and apply different stitch types, stitch properties, and colors to make the design into a unique and interesting design. So let's get started. I'll go to New Blank Design and I'll click Insert Artwork. I'll use the Koi Fish which is in the Artwork Auto Digitizing folder. For our first version, we'll use the Auto Digitize Instant Embroidery. Select your artwork and just click the tool. And there we have a fully digitized design. If we look at it in the Sequence Docker on the Objects tab, we can see that objects have been created and stitches have been applied. And if you notice these stitches, these are actually travel stitches and they're running underneath these other objects. So it's actually making an efficient design as it does this. If we look at the Design Information Docker and go to the Design tab, we can see that it's fairly high stitch count, 44,523, has 10 colors, 10 stops, so no repeated colors, and it has 55 trims. I'll go to a new design window. I'll insert the same artwork. And this time I'll click Auto Digitize Embroidery. This time we have some choices we can make. Here we can see the original design information. It's a 256 bit depth color design, and the original image had 11 colors. Now HatchUp's processed that down to 10 colors. We have a color slider here where we can add more colors or remove colors, and we can add or remove details. These are the 10 colors in the design. Now if I want to see where one is, I can select it and click Locate. If I select that one and click Locate, I can see where that one is. I can choose to merge colors. I'm good with these colors, so we're just going to move ahead. I'll click OK. And on this screen, we can choose some settings. So in this column, we can choose whether it should be a fill or detail, or we could omit that color if we don't want it. This column shows the original colors. This column shows whatever thread colors we've applied. Now we haven't applied any thread colors. These are RGB values. RGB values are image colors. Now as we look at this design, we can see that we have an outline around the fish and we have an outline around the flower. And if we look at this and click locate, we can see that is the fish outline. And I really want that to sew last. So on this screen, it allows you to begin thinking like a digitizer. And when we digitize a design, we work generally from the background to the foreground, from the center out, and from the largest areas to the smallest ones. Now, you can't always apply all those rules to every design, but those are general guidelines. And since this is the outline around our fish, I'm going to move that down to the end. And I do that by selecting it and just moving it on down. This color is the first color, and that works for me. I'm going to do these other leaves next, so I'll select that one and move it up. Select this one and move it up. Then I'm going to do the flower here, move that up. And then this is the outline around the flower, and we can check that. And yes, that is. I'll move that up. And I believe this is part of the flower. We can check that. Yes, move that up. And then we have our fish, the light body the shading detail on the body, and then the scales. So this is a good order. Now we need to decide, do we want these to be fills or details, or do we want to omit some? I'm not going to omit any. I'm going to keep all of them. But when they're fills, they can be either satin fills or tatami fills. When they're details, it's going to depend on what I have set over here. So I want to have 
this thin outline here set as a detail. It's really too thin to be a satin. And I'm also going to pick the scales color, which is this color, and make that details. And I'm going to change this from satin fill to center line. Now one more choice. We can choose to have Hatch map these to our current thread chart or another thread chart that we pick. We can see what it's going to look like by clicking the Add Thread Chart Colors to the palette. Currently we're using Isochord Thread and we can see we have a pretty good match here. So I'm going to say this is all okay with me and I'll click OK button and Hatch has digitized our design. We can see that this one has 42,418 stitches and 22 trims. Same 10 colors, different sewing order. So let's compare our two designs. This is the design I just did that was using the auto digitize embroidery tool. This one used the auto digitize instant. They look pretty similar. The difference is mainly in the layering. And if you look at this area here, you might see that this color is on top of this outline, whereas over here it's underneath. You can also see that the stitch types are slightly different. So the scales here and the outline here are run stitches. Over here they are satin stitches and they are really skinny. Now on our fish we do have some areas that are pretty thin that should probably be a run stitch, but when we do the stitch type selection, it's going to apply to all the stitches in that color block. And we can't just pick center line for some and satins for another. But when we have these, we can change these to another stitch type. Let's do a quick stitch player on this second version. I'll click the player tool, and I've got it going really fast here. And what I want you to see here, see these stitches? These are connector stitches. These are travel runs. And that's a smart thing to do. We have travel runs between these three light green objects and between our leaves. This will minimize unnecessary jumps and trims, which is always a good thing to do. I'm going to pause it again. Notice that we have a hole here. We have a gap. And that's because there's another object that stitches over the top of this. Auto digitizing works by applying stitches to blocks of color that it can see. It can't see the pink running under here. So it stops at the edge of the pink. Now in small areas like this, if we were manually digitizing this, we would just fill that in. And that would actually be a good thing to do because stitches push and pull when you go to sew them. And when they do that, you can have gaps. So just because it looks perfect on the screen doesn't mean it might sew that way. Now over here we have satin stitches, and here we have tatami. And we might think that this is inconsistent. It's actually not. Because auto-digitizing works by rules. And when it sees a smaller area that it can fill with satin stitches, it will do that. When it sees larger areas, it knows it needs a tatami. So where our eye sees a flower here, Hatch just sees blocks of color. And it's only looking at the blocks of color and the size to determine what kind of stitches to put there. So as we play the rest of the design, you can see that there are gaps in here too. And those are just run stitches over those areas. We really wouldn't need to have holes in our base fill there. And I played that really fast, but you may have noticed that there are connector stitches connecting all the scale detail between the design. And that's a really good thing too, because that really reduces the trims. This trim count is about half the original one that we did with the auto digitized instant embroidery. Now let's compare this one with the revised one. The design here on the left was also originally created with auto digitized embroidery. Then I spent some time modifying the various objects. I changed some colors, I changed some fill types, I changed some patterns, and a lot of what I did was I filled in those places where we had voids in the original one. So there are no voids under these little stitches. I even connected the flower here just so I could have the pattern continue properly. Now you'll learn how to do all these types of changes and more in the courses here in the Academy. 
I'll quickly show you just a few so you can see what's possible. So for example, you might start by changing fill colors. I'll close this and I'll open the sequence docker. I'll click on the colors tab and I want to change this color to maybe this blue. Now I have a gradient fill on this water over here, so let's see how to do that. I'm going to close that docker. I'll double click on this object. I'll go to the stitching tab. I'm going to turn off the underlay and I'm going to set the stitch angle to zero. Then I'll go to the effects tab, slide down here to the gradient fills, and I'll just pick a profile. And you can see how changing the profiles change the appearance here. So let's see what we can do with this flower. I'm going to zoom in, and with it selected, I'm going to hide unselected. So we just have our flower. I'll go to the Edit Objects Toolbox, and I'll do Smooth Shapes, and then I want to add some stitch angles. And I'm just going to place some angles like this, press Enter, and then I'll go to the Fill tab, and I'll pick a different fill pattern. And you can see how easy that was to do. I'm going to right-click again, and unhide all. Press zero, and we've zoomed back out. Now, if you notice this face over here, this little feeler thing is a satin stitch, but his face is a fill. Let me show you how I did that. I'll zoom in on that. And with it selected, I'll use the knife tool, and I'll just cut across there like that. Change this to a satin. And this I had changed to a Florentine effect. I'll click Reshape. And I just need to change the angle line so that it's curved. I'll press Escape to leave Reshape. Press 0 on the keyboard. And you can see already it's starting to look more interesting. Auto-digitizing is a great way to start a design when you have the right type of artwork. When you're new, you may want to do a quick auto-digitize just to see how the design might be passed. For example, when we did the player on this one, you saw travel runs under various areas to connect these otherwise isolated pieces so that we didn't have any unnecessary jumps and trims. If you're new to embroidery, you might not think to do that. 